They say winning ain't everything. Well, we don't have them tight conversations over here, man. Had that conversation with the losers. We trying to win at everything we do. Even in the loss, we don't see defeat. We see a lesson learned. Straight up. Look, I came into this world in 1978 The doc looked me in my face and knew I was something great 45, 42 Prescott, that's where I'm from Grew up in the slums around dope dealers and bums As humble as I was, I adapted to my habitat In my own lane though, far from where they crashing That dumb bar graduate, the game I done mastered it Served in the Navy, look, y'all don't know the half of it Pops passing no one, moms passed last year I know they up in heaven smiling down crying mad tears Cause they son making it, no telling where I'm taking it My city been cursed, but I feel that I'm breaking it Coached at Wayne High in 15 in one state Seen the fork in the road and went straight I know what I'm worth, I'm OG King Kirk, Brooklyn Nets gaming crew legend, let's work. Hey, this is OG King Kirk, your host of the OG Two Cents Podcast. As usual, I want to thank everybody that tunes in each and every Sunday. We truly appreciate it. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you hit that subscribe button, like, comment, share it. Uh, if you listen on Apple Podcasts, make sure you give us a five-star rating, it helps us out a lot. Links will be in the description for all available streaming platforms. Let's continue to stand up against any forms of social injustice and racism. And one of the campaigns that I went on uh, with Zenny uh, is See More Love. Uh, and that's not just a, 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 a Pride Month thing. That should be 365 days a year thing. So uh, let's continue to, to, to love one another and let's practice that more often than not. Uh, this episode is brought to you by Zenny Blocks. Make sure to armor your eyes with Zenny Blocks Virtual Clear Blue Blockers. It's important to protect your eyes from the harmful blue light from your digital screens. So you'll have less eye strain, and that makes for better sleep and performance. Check them out at zenny.com slash gaming, or follow them at Zenny Gaming on Twitter and Instagram. This episode, episode 68, what's up with Yay? Uh, his government name is Eric Ward. Uh, Yay Not Gaming is his gamer tag. Uh, he's one of the good guys. Uh, been around. He, he played in the NBA 2K League in season one uh, for Knicks Gaming. But just let me tell you a little bit about him. Uh, it was Eric Ward, born and raised in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Attended Ball State University after high school. Moved to Indianapolis after graduating college with his bachelor's degree in marketing. Uh, he has an eight-year-old daughter. Uh, pretty much stayed at home uh, over the years watching and, and, and playing and getting better at 2K. Uh, in 2018, in the inaugural season of the NBA 2K League, uh, he was drafted by Knicks Gaming, and they went on to win the first NBA 2K League championship. Uh, now he's a consistent gamer, content creator, host, and he's expiring to be a GM and coach one day in the NBA 2K League. Uh, as you know, I don't like to get to, I don't like doing too much talking. So without further ado, uh, yay. What's good with you, man? Man, glad to be here, man. Appreciate you having me. Nah, no doubt. Um, you know, you got uh, some history in the 2K world, uh, been in the league, uh, doing some great things in the community. So I thought it'd be great to, to have you on so you can uh, tell your story. And uh, how you got to where you are today? Oh yeah, for sure. I know you don't do a lot of talking. I watched a few of the uh, a few of the episodes. Um, oh, one thing about me, I, I grew up in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, born and raised. And then after school, um, after high school, I graduated and went to Ball State University, which is in a small town called Muncie, Indiana. And I went there for marketing and like a sales concentration, and got my minor in interpersonal relations. And then um, I've been there four years, graduated uh, with a bachelor's and then went straight into the workforce. I'm doing a lot of sales stuff, started with like door to door sales and then got into uh, uh, more uh, logistics was third party logistics with C.H. Robinson. And then during that whole time, um, I, I had a daughter in college junior year. Um, she's eight, about to be nine years old now. It's crazy how time flies. And uh, the whole time like raising her, I spent a lot of time in the crib. I didn't really do a lot of like going out, of course. So uh, during that time, I, I spent a lot of time playing the game and that's when I got 
got to meet a lot of interesting people um, going through park in the 2K15 days. Cause I used to just be a play now head and play like uh, in those small, like little like, uh, uh, websites for like five dollar games and stuff. Then I got to the program circuit and, and the, the guys I was playing park with, um, and we, we ended up getting pretty good at the game around 2K17, 2K16, started getting on the leaderboards, and that's when they announced the league in 2K17. And I thought, like, well, like I always felt like a person that should be doing a lot more than just sitting at a desk all day. So uh, let me le- let me at least put as much effort as I can into this as I possibly can to put myself in the best position. And um, luckily, I did really well in the combine. I really worked on my uh, communication skills during the time, worked at being uh, decent at multiple positions. And I was able to score um, a spot into the 102 pool, the, you know, the, the famous 102 pool, where everybody had a spot in those days, which was nice. <laughs> you know, I went to New York, and I fortunately got drafted by the Knicks gaming team. And uh, from there, it had a big run. Um, it was an up and down roller coaster season, but was able to, to finish out pretty okay. And then uh, I, I was I, I don't know how far you want me to go. <laughs> no, you say pretty okay. You want a chip? Yeah. <laughs> hey, you, you know, the, going back to that, um, you know, you was uh, on a team with some 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 interesting figures, uh, to say the least. I mean, you had Kuda, uh, you had Nate, two guys who I love to death. I mean, Goofy. Uh, Idris, you know, what was it like playing with those guys? Um, it really, it really gave me a lesson in like leadership in a way, just because I was dealing with so many different personalities and like me, those guys have been in the comp scene for so long and I only been in there for about a year. So I was the worst person on the lineup. So it was a lot of learning and a lot of like being a sponge in a room the whole time. And like dealing with somebody like Goofy and Idris was different than talking to somebody like Kuda. It was like t- t- totally opposite ends of the spectrum. So it was a lot of learning. And, and I'm sure if you got like Les Ball up on the show, he'll tell you the exact same thing. Yeah. The, um, you know, now, you know, you look back on your career in the league. Um, I, You know, it's funny because I tell everybody uh, it's only a selected few who has a championship. So as you look back at like on your career in the league, what, what, what are some things that you think you would have done different uh, if you could do it all over again? Um, in terms of like the way I played and like my like playing style, I think I wouldn't change anything uh, for the world because you know, it resulted into a, a championship and a ticket wins. And, you know, I can't take that back and I won't. Um, one thing I think I would have done differently is usually uh, actually just use the uh, platform uh, that I had uh, to uh, for my advantage. And, you know, I just kind of just played the game and just showed up to practice. A lot of these guys now are making the mistake of like not doing content now where they have the uh, all the eyes on them. They have the platform, they have the, you know, the brand of the organization they're representing on their back. So that it's, it's, a, it's a little easier at that point because when you get out of the league, you kind of have to start at scratch in a way. And so like I tell these guys, whenever I get them on the show, when I did Prospect Nation for NAPEX to, um, to like use this opportunity to grow the brand because the league is shouldn't be the ultimate goal. It should just be a stepping stone. It should be, uh, you should, should aim for way higher, should aim for the stars. Agreed, agreed. And that's a, a, a great bit of advice. Uh, that's something I try to preach, especially to the rookies, but not even just to the rookies, just players in general. You want to, like you said, you want to capitalize off the opportunity of having a professional uh, sports team, you know, you're representing, but they they also uh, in the forefront of uh, what you're doing. Um, you know, you you became a, a, a consistent, and I and I like that. Like, I, you became a consistent content content creator. Um, I th- I think your work is great. I'm subbed up. Uh, I, I watched the vi- <laughs> I watched the videos. I think it's very informative. Um, you're doing a great job of, of putting people out there. Um, talk about that for a second, uh, how the idea came about and what, you know, how do you come up with some of the, the, the content that you create now? Yeah, it, like, it all started um, like early last fall around, uh, I started with like just streaming like regular games and stuff, but um, I, I, it's hard for me to really talk and play the game at the same time because I'm so locked in and I, and I feel bad like missing out on the chat and stuff. So I was like, oh, and, and then at the same time, it, we were like, we were missing this um this it's like we're it's like this gap or like misinformation of a lot of players we don't know about and like in the people we do know about there's no like you either watch the games or you see the screenshots so i was like it's nobody really like covering this to a degree 
um, other than like the live streams. So like I wanted to dig deep into uh, one because I have a big love for the game of 2K and then I love the community, even though, you know, it has its ups and downs in terms of like toxicity and support. But I was like, I know a lot of the OGs were doing all these content series to where they were highlighting these players and highlighting these games. And even if you didn't watch it, like you can look forward to the content. And I was like, okay, like I wanted to step into that realm and start bringing more light to the guys that we know, of course, and to, like start helping them build, the, you know, their fan base for the people who can't watch the games or just don't have time or and to these guys who are on the up and coming and we don't know enough about because they stream and they only get five people watching. So like, I'm trying to uh, hit as many bases as I can. And then at the same time, like build my resume and, and make myself um, more valuable to any organization that may need, may need any help. You know, now leading into that, um, you know, you was at the UPA World Championships uh, as a coach. Um, you know, I, I talk about that, uh, how that opportunity came about and talk about the, the UPA uh, World Championship event and what that was like too. Yeah, uh, starting with like the coaching thing, um, it kind of came out randomly. I was, I said something like funny on the timeline and then I got an email, I mean an email, I got a uh, DM from, from Moody and I got DM from Seldom to uh, both the coach, like either fire six or throw down. And, and I was like, man, I don't really know how to choose to, between the two, but I was like, I, I'm, I'm closer with the guys to throw down. So I was like, I'll, I'll take these guys. And as soon as after I said that, Moody was like, oh man, we got like 12 offers. I was like, bro, why you hit me up then? <laughs> um, but like, they ended up choosing me, of course, to like to be their coach. And then like the whole, the whole event was very well ran. It, it, it kind of surprised me how well they did and how well they prepped for it, especially with it being such a huge, huge event center in Arlington. Um, seems like uh, there were like small hiccups here and there, but they were fixed right away. I know Famous kind of went over his video too as well. Uh, but being there, uh, meeting all the guys from Twitter, like even the guys who have Twitter fingers are just like super cool to meet. Uh, I got some, uh, got like build some different friendships that I thought I would never like do. Like it's just, like meeting guys like Joe Vegas, meeting guys like Hami. Like me and Hami, like I bumped into him plenty of times and never said a word to him. So like, but like the whole, the whole time in Dallas, we, you know, we got along really well. And uh, it was it was great to meet those guys in person, especially hearing the way they talk on Twitter and to see the way they play, and then seeing um, and, and watching those guys grow. Because the one the one excuse we have for these players is that they don't know what it's like to play on the stage. So now they have the stage atmosphere and the stage experience. Stage experience. I mean, that kind of adds to them. And for the people who weren't playing, it kind of got them to feel like, man, I like I want to get back on the sticks now. And I kind of felt the same way. I was like, man, I could get back out here. Like I missed this. So like, and, and you know, I got a, a taste of that. And I think the event was well ran. I think a lot of good connections were made and I can't wait for the next one. Yeah. It's, and who would have thought uh, that an amateur event would be uh, back on the stage before the actual uh, NBA 2K League. Um, that was uh, the the kind of chills that I had got uh, as I was sitting at home watching. Um, I, that's the one thing that I miss uh, with the league right now is uh, I like the interpersonal communication that, uh, of everybody flying in, linking up, you know, getting to see some of my best friends, uh, getting to meet new players, like you said, that I've never – uh, have met before and, and different things like that. Now I know some players like the the remote setting; it's, it's more comfortable, uh, so to speak. But I, I miss it, and uh, I can't wait till we get back to it. Um, you know, are you going to continue uh, your role with with Throwdown, or is that was that something just a, a one off or temporary, or is that something that you're going to keep uh, thriving to do? Because I see. Uh, the, the, I, I, well, I, I want to see the community changing uh, as far as the structure of it, of having coaches and GMs. I think that's a good way to, to start building your resume. And, and, and as we go forward, uh, people being able to look at you in that light. So is that something you're going to continue to do or what's that about? Um, I definitely love the opportunity I had with Throwdown. Uh, I'm unsure of what, like, what they continue to do with post draft kind of wrapping up here and what their goals are going forward. Um, I was just, in, I still jump in discords with them, talk to them. Um, Dev, if you've seen on Twitter, his PS5 is kind of jacked up. So I jumped in and played the hash for him for a few games here and there. Um, but it's really, you know, it's really just kind of playing it by ear. But I do love the fact that, like, some of these teams are, like, getting sponsors and starting to go down, like, the coaching GM route and start to grow the brand of the, of, of their pro-am team, like, like starting with Liquid and what Roy's doing over there. 
Um, so to see more teams do that, and I think that's just going to grow the league. Um, for for throwdown specifically, like you know, those are my guys. I like all those guys I've known from season one and didn't watch them before then, before I was even a name in the community. And so like just just to get the throw one, the throwdown jerseys, like the little baseball jerseys that they, that Moody got made, uh, it was it was an honor. So uh, like going forward, I guess we'll just play it by ear. But I would love for if those guys asked me to come back. Yeah, and, and just to back uh, track a little bit, and one thing that you talked about when you mentioned about the guys with the Twitter fingers and stuff like that, um, I, I think um, a lot of people uh, they 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 get things misconstrued uh, from a competitive standpoint. I mean, I think just the nature of basketball in itself, people talk trash. Uh, I, I don't, it's not always something personal or, or anything like that. I just think it's uh, something natural that that happens within the sport. Uh, so, uh, you know, you never see for the most part, the action that most people talk about on Twitter uh, is in, in person. I think largely because if you play sports uh, to any degree, you kind of know, that the trash talking comes with it. So uh, that's something always interesting when people actually finally uh, link up. Like, I mean, yeah, it, it looks good and sound good. And it creates a lot of hype and everything around whatever's going on, the more trash is being talked. But uh, we hardly ever see anything in the physical. And I'm, and I'm happy about that. Uh, so it's just always funny when people talk about that. Um, you know, NBA 2K League season four going on right now. Um, you know, tell me your thoughts about, uh, you know, what you see thus far and, uh, some of your, your, I mean, you, you actually do this within some of your content, but I just talk about some of your favorite teams, favorite players, uh, who you think might win it all, uh, different things like that. Oh man, where do I start? So, uh, one thing I kind of been, uh, one thing I noticed right away that I feel like this is one of the more entertaining um, league builds that we've had um, in, in, within the last few years, or just I, I think a season one was really entertaining. This this season is it's really entertaining to watch. Like I never get bored watching these teams. Um, in terms of like players, the favorite player to watch, obviously it's been kind of it's it's really between six thirty and chalk. Like uh, uh, six thirty is just kind of came out out of like we kind of knew he was going to be good. We didn't think it'd be this good right away, and then it's good for Cody to finally have. A, uh, a point guard and I feel like all his prayers have been answered now they're they're like number one right now in the uh it's the western conference in the western conference and then chalk is out here like getting like 15 16 assists uh shock uh shots is down low getting double doubles every game and he's shooting all these fades and then now everybody's shooting fades so I, I just think it's really entertaining to watch those two guys uh go crazy in the league and then chalk is like he's so entertaining to the point where it's like he's really fulfilling that like role of like the villain of the league. And I think every, I think the leagues need that. Like, and he, he like, he say what he means and he means what he says and then he backs it up, but like he's fun to root against, but, but he makes, it makes the game way more entertaining, like creates a narrative for every single game that that's going to. So I love that about watching chalk. And then in terms of teams, um, I like just looking at like, uh, like the way the Timberwolves started off the season was crazy and the way the Wizards are kind of still picking up the momentum from the championship run is still really good. And now we have like heat that's on a, like a, they went on like a six hole run and they like, uh, or they won seven in their last eight or something crazy like that. And, um, the same thing with the Kings were starting to pick things up. Mama starting to get back to his usual groove and then they picking up their, 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 their defense, uh, right where they left off last year, even with adding in majestic. So it's a lot of things around the league that I've been noticing that's been really entertaining. Like, it seems like every single game you can find something. Um, even if the, like people like say like the teams with bad records or like boring matchups, but like it's still narratives there. There's still really talented players. He's still the best players in the world. And like every single, every single week that comes by, I love watching and even in the broadcast have been entertaining. Gotcha, gotcha. You even uh you don't have some time on there uh on a, a few time a time or two uh for the two K League broadcast. Uh talk about that and and how, how was that? Oh yeah, it was a lot of fun. I don't know Matt um reached out to me and asked me if I want to be a part of the broadcast. I was like, oh yeah, for sure. Like I, I would never turn that down. 
and uh, like we got on there with uh, Scott and Dirk, and uh, it was crazy because you know they use V Mix to like do all their the the broadcast and stuff, and I'm in the V Mix channel, and I'm like my camera looks great, and then you know, I go on the stream, it looks so blurred. I'm like I'm like what is happening right now? But uh, they were able to hear <laughs> they were able to hear me fine, and uh, I got love from folks in the chat. Uh, I think it was able to keep a good conversation. The games that were going on went really well. Um, I tried my best not to be too biased towards the Knicks, but they didn't play that day, so it was, it was pretty easy. So uh, I, I had a, I had a blast, and I, I would definitely love to come back. Gotcha, gotcha. Now, um, you know, NBA 2K22 will be around the corner uh, here soon. Um, what you think about the covers, and what are, what are some some gameplay? and different things that you're looking forward to or what, what would you like to happen in, in this upcoming game? Uh, yeah, I, th- I feel like my views on what I would like is whenever I have these conversations, oh, it's been kind of like um, unrealistic for the next couple of years. And like, I understand that, but I think it's going to be a thing in the future, especially when the servers get better. Uh, one thing in terms of like the cover, uh, I do like the legendary cover. I think that's slick, but the Doncic cover, I'm not a huge fan of. I feel like it's a lot of blank space on the outside I feel like I, I got spoiled with that D-Wade cover with the sun name in the in the, in the sand I thought that was fire and I, was, I think that was the best cover we had in a while but um in terms of like the gameplay and the things I would like to see um I didn't mind the city um I didn't mind that at all and, and, and then having like the different I think they should bring the old stuff back in terms of like the uh the um two shoot, what was like the 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 shoot the ballers and all those and like oh, I think you should bring all those guys back the writers and all that back and then uh, in terms of gameplay I would love to see I think the difference between stage and pro am it's not the main difference it's difference for me it's with stage a lot of these guys can see themselves on the court they can surround the court and make it as big as possible and you can like sit in and watch the game and be there I think it should be something like that with pro am. Um, to where I know it's, it might be a server issue. It's going to be tunnel like Wi-Fi issues, of course. But to be able to sit in the bleachers and watch Dave Fry go and get goofy in a pro am matchup, and then get the little sideline view, I think that would be fire. I, th- I don't think that's going to happen this year, but that's just down the road that I would like to see personally. And then like be able to pull up the stream with everybody's name in the bleachers, and maybe have like a side chat or something instead of going on Twitch or have the Twitch partner with the with the actual 2K League gameplay. Like I said, like unrealistic in the near future. And like that, that's what I'm looking for. And I feel like that would be so dope. Um, outside of that, uh, I think the gameplay is going to be a little bit smoother. Of course, they're going to throw a wrench in here to make it a little more difficulty. I mean, difficult uh, just to expand the, the skill gap. And they're going to do something there. Probably mess with the dribbling a little bit. Make the shooting might be a tad harder. But um, like, I've always been a fan of every year of the game. Uh, my favorite game, my favorite two Ks came out was nineteen to seventeen. So if they find a way to uh, like kind of clean up the the archetype builds to where we can't dunk and shoot and do everything and and like kind of restrict those abilities back a bit, just so we can see how people can really uh, glitch a build, then like I, I'm I'm good either way. Got you, got you. Now you mentioned about uh, having a feature where people are sitting in the stands, kind of take you back to. 2K15 when everybody is surrounded in the wreck uh, around a, around the court. Uh, it should look like it used to be sometimes two, three hundred people uh, <laughs> watching uh, some of those matchups. So yeah, that would that would be uh, that would be fire. I mean, uh, you know, I don't know how that would affect uh, obviously the streamers that stream on Twitch, but definitely would be a, a, a nice feature. Um, you know, at this point in the show, I can do OG wants to know uh, rapid fire questions answer open as honestly as possible gotcha uh, biggest influence Ooh, uh biggest influence it's I, I got two answers i got two answers on this one in terms of like being a player and like growing a brand i have to say uh bear the beast i, I think he's a little younger than me but uh it seems like he's taken everything that he's been given he got a championship and he's growing the brand he's got random content and he's silly uh, he's, you know, he's posting up on stories every day, whether it be Instagram, Facebook or whatever. And I think he's going to take this way bigger than it needs to be. So, I, and I kind of get motivation from Bear that way. Um, in terms of like the, on the other side, like more like the business side of things, um, it's kind of like been a mix between like famous and uh, like coach Kyle Rudy, uh, just because like the way, like 
Rudy like conducts himself in meetings and like talking to more of the higher ups and the staff and with the Knicks and stuff. And like, I, I learned a lot just from being like a player and then kind of hearing those conversations. And then with famous is more of like the pro-am, like staying close to the players, like on the way up in the grassroots level, um, like being interactive in the chat and being interactive in uh, Twitter, um, Twitter timeline and doing content and, and, and at the same time and showing that like, how many doors can open off of that. Um, and, like, those are my two uh, best answers. So I give you a lot of play. <laughs> I give you like three guys. <laughs> no, what, what motivates you? Um, really just becoming uh, just something special. Like I always grew up thinking like, man, I can do more than like what I'm doing. So like when I worked in, in sales and I worked at the desk, I'm like, yeah, I'm doing this for, a company but like they don't care about me I could easily be replaced and so I always wanted to do something special and, and feel value um to the whatever I to where whatever I was passionate in so where it be now so now it's video games playing 2k so like being valued to the people I played with to value to the community and, and, and showing that love and then getting that love in return so like um I have this like weird like I, as soon as I wake up so even days where I'm not motivated I was like man if I do this five wide on this cat I'm like, a lot of people are going, going to rock with it and, you know, they're going to show love back and, I, you know, and I'm showing love to this player and, I, you know, I could just keep doing that. And then and, and that feeling is just great to, to, to see how these guys like get the response and the message to be like, man, I appreciate you taking the time to watch my game and let me know what I need to work on and like anything like that. Biggest accomplishment. Um, biggest accomplishment really was winning the championship. I know that was like a, a pretty easy answer, but we went through so much that season. A lot of people heard our story about how we were terrible in the middle of the year and then a patch happened and we were able to turn everything around. Again, of course, you hear the coup to sliders or whatever, but like, man, we had to work hard for that championship. <laughs> uh, favorite NBA 2K League team? Oh, man. Uh, Right now, uh, it's gonna sound biased, but I'm gonna say the Knicks just because I like the Malik's game a lot, and I feel like he can get to the point where he's like where his Kai is at, where he's putting up big numbers and they're starting to win games. Just need to close out some games in the last in the last two minutes. Favorite quote? Um, it's actually a little cheesy. It's a quote I made up. <laughs> it's a quote I made up in high school. It's uh, go out and get go out and get it or get gotten. Uh, I kind of like made it up on a whim. But like I like randomly comes back to me just because, because um, if you're not gonna if you're not gonna pursue your goals and you're not gonna put the the effort forward, um, then you're gonna watch a lot of opportunities pass up and then life's just kind of gonna, gonna dwindle away. And like uh, if if you do if you do everything that you're supposed to do in terms of like going towards your goal and put the hard work in, you're gonna see results. Got you, got you. Uh, favorite actor and actress. Mm, actor. Um, Right now, I'd probably say Michael B. Jordan, um, actress. Uh, shoot, it's kind of a. I had to really think, cause I've really been slacking on my movies lately, and I bounce around a lot. But I'll say Mila Kunis. I feel like everything she is is in is either like good or funny. Got you. Uh, favorite genre of music? Uh, I bounce around a lot lately. It's been. Probably just like rap, like listen to a lot of like Lil Baby and like Lil Dirt, Gunna and all those guys. Favorite movie of all time? Ooh, favorite movie of all time, Rush Hour 2. Chris Tucker, Jackie Chan, classic. Favorite pro -am, favorite amateur pro-am player and 2K League Pro? Favorite pro-am player right now, I have to say Spam. Um, 2K League Pro. Ooh. Uh, I would say 6.30. He's just really fun to watch. I was like, 6.30. I, I, I'm a big 6.30 fan right now. Yeah, the interesting thing about 6.30 is, um, of course, I knew about the name, but I never really, heard, like, knew anything about him. Like, or, or <laughs> really seen him, like, you know, he he pretty low-key, and, and he get the job done. So, yeah. I mean, it's, it's real... It's real interesting to, to watch him work. I mean, the way he's done it. So, um, it, it's a good answer. <laughs> so, what's what's next for Yay? 
Um, hopefully, like when these you know these opportunities start to present themselves in the 2K League, we're sure unsure about any announcements of expansion teams, but hopefully being able to get into a coaching or GM spot. I've been trying to prepare myself mentally and uh, in terms of learn as much as I can leading up to it. Um, reaching out to folks, uh, gaining some insight about what their experiences have been. Um, and I've just been kind of been taking a day at a time, starting with content, talking to players, uh, talking to people in the league, um, learning a little more about what's going on. And at the same time, just better myself every single day. Gotcha, gotcha. Now, um, at this point, um, you know, I want you to plug all your social channels, your YouTube, anything you got going on, plug away. Okay, so YouTube is probably what I've been working on the most lately. That is yay, space, not space gaming. I should be able to pop up with a picture of me, um, like staring sideways with like some Nick's headphones on. Uh, that's how you know you got the good, oh, uh, the good, the good one because I had like a, a dummy one back in the day that I don't mess with anymore, and it's the same name. But um, on Twitter, I'm at yay, not gaming. On Twitch, is yay, not 2k. Um, and then also, if you are on Facebook gaming at all, it's gay not gaming, all one word on there too as well. And to start putting some stuff out on TikTok too as well, if you want to check out TikTok, it's gay not TikTok, all one word. So a little corny, but it, it's it's catchy. <laughs> but nah, yeah, man, I, I want to thank you for taking time out to come on the OG Two Cents podcast. I want to personally say that I like the work that you've been doing. Uh, keep it up. You know, consistency is always the key for me. I mean, obviously knowing when to take breaks, but I think, it, you know, being consistent can take you a long way. Um, so you definitely uh, OG Two Cents approve on this end, man. So hey. just uh, keep up the keep up the good work, man. Appreciate you, man. Yeah, again, appreciate you having me on the show, man. I want to thank everybody for tuning in, watching this episode. If you're on YouTube, don't forget to give us that. Hit that sub button. Uh, if you are listening on Apple Podcasts, make sure you subscribe to that as well. You can also find us on iHeartRadio, Spotify, and all major streaming platforms. Um, follow the OG Two Cents Podcast on social media at the OG Two Cents Podcast. That's on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Follow myself on social media at OG King Kirk, that's O-G-K-I-N-G-C-U-R-T on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram as well. Uh, you can go to www.ogkingkirk.com for everything OG King Kirk and the OG Two Cents podcast. Um, shout out to my team, Strider Visuals, Box Graphics, Cy Evermore, and Matrix in his bag. Uh, those those guys continue to help make the podcast is what it is today. Um, you can catch me on Esports Extra now every Saturday and Sunday, at 4 p.m. on the Black News Channel. That's where host Larry Ridley, the queen of Esports Extra, Kelly Wells Brinkley, and the bros, Antonio Williams, Dermot Rowell, and producer extraordinaire Kevin Mamouzet. Like I said, you can catch Esports Extra every Saturday and Sunday, 4 p.m. on the Black News Channel. Uh, make sure to, to grab your OG King Kurt and OG Two Cents podcast apparel. Uh, that's at skulls.com slash OG King Kurt. And continuing right now, if you uh, hit the promo code OG 15%, you can get 15% off of your order. Uh, you can go there. You can get anything from hoodies, T-shirts, joggers, coffee mugs, hey, lap laptop cases, you name it. Uh, it's there waiting on you. So uh, make sure uh, you join the OG Two Cents crew. And make sure you tune in to next week's episode. And remember, if it makes sense, it's an OG Two Cents. OG out. Put this work in, fellas. And much, much, much love to the entire 2K community for always showing me love. Without y'all, we wouldn't be here. Yard, yard.